Hi, and welcome to the Intervention Channel, or welcome back. Today's subject is uh, the issue of proof. I'm Steve Bruno. I've been doing interventions for a long time, and I'm recalling one where uh, the guy, he, uh, his uh, son, was doing a meth, and we were doing an intervention, and he came out with this box, this little box of paraphernalia, right? There's baggies. I mean, he had this whole treasure trove of proof, if you want to call it that. Um, and he said, okay, so during the intervention, here's this box of stuff we can use. And he was eager, I'll tell you, to confront his son with this. So I sat down and had a little talk, the same talk I'm going to have with you right now. If, if you don't know that a problem exists, if you don't know if there is a drug addiction, if you're not sure that there is a condition of alcoholism or addiction, you're certainly not ready to do an intervention. But that's probably not why you're here. You're here because you need help. You're here as a professional because your people that you're working with need help. Um, uh, the, but the, the, so in other words, trying to prove to someone else that the problem exists uh, is not something you want to do by presenting paraphernalia. Let me put it that way. That's not the road you want to take. Because there are arguments spewing from the addict about why those things are from before, that's earlier, that's when I used to be doing it, but I'm not doing it anymore. I mean, an addict will have your head spinning with crack pipe in hand telling you why you're wrong about the fact that he has an addiction or why he's an alcoholic. Oh, the bottles, yeah, I know, I know, I'm working on it. I mean, that's from, you know, I was using, but I'm really better now. It's, it's just, I, I, I don't go to the trash very often, so I tend to accumulate bottles. I'm sorry about that, I'll clean up my room. I mean, addicts will not, you can think that you're gonna prove something exists and what you'll end up with is a big clusterfuck mess um, of confusion, of antagonized, antagonistic communication from the addict or alcoholic. He will be very defensive. You're gonna basically be embarrassing him and humiliating him as a way of trying to communicate that you know that he or she has a problem. Maybe somebody in the family is telling you, no, Johnny doesn't have a problem. You know, obviously he's doing much better. He says you're, you know, you're just exaggerating it. So what do you do? You know, you go down and get what a, a urine test, a drug test, and you know, follow him around with it. Forget all that. That's a that's just a, a no win situation. Something that typically everybody can agree on is this: that Johnny has lost his way. That Sarah, the addict. She's lost her way in life. She's not operating well, right? If you were to take a piece of her life, right, from let's say a five-year piece of it, if she's been addicted that long, or maybe a three-year, or one year, or six months, or 10 years, or whatever, and you look at it, and you both, you and the family member who's fighting you on this, are looking at it objectively, you can probably see quite clearly that Sarah, Johnny, whoever it is, wife, husband, offspring, parent, whoever you're trying to help, has not had a sense of honor for a long time. Uh, he has not had any sense or quality of integrity. His morals are lost. Uh, ethics, huh, right, ethics. Ethics are the actions or limitations that we take or we place upon ourselves in order to do the right thing. Ethics are a luxury. You don't have to be ethical. People are unethical all the time. It's a choice. It's a choice we make each and every day. And for an active addict or alcoholic, one can easily see that uh, this person is not uh, is no longer ethical. And certainly his or her sense of responsibility, probably the greatest, most glaring uh, aspect of an addict or alcoholic, the hallmark 
of an addict or alcoholic is lack of responsibility. And this is expressed not in, I don't want to go to work, but it's expressed in terms of them seeing themselves as a victim to life, a victim of you, a victim of their job, a victim of, you know, if only I didn't have this, if only you'd stop doing this to me, if only I had more money, if only my work would stop doing this, if only I hadn't had this, if only this person wasn't involved or this person was involved, if only I could get back together with my girlfriend, my boyfriend, if only I could break up with my girlfriend, my boyfriend, if I could get rid of this car, blah, 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 blah. Victim, 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 victim is probably the greatest hallmark. And that is what treatment programs, excuse me, that is what treatment programs handle. Any good program, and I'm not talking about any program, I'm talking about any good program, handles the aspect primarily of returning the individual to a condition of responsibility. So that's what you want to sell. Not proving that there's a drug addiction. Drug, drugs and alcohol are symptomatic. Okay, they are a symptom of a uh, broken operating system, right? The person's operating system is broken. That's what you want to bring people's attention to. That's what you're trying to fix. Once that operating system is repaired, then drugs or alcohol can no longer be or will likely, in many cases, in most cases, be a symptom of their life because their operating system is now repaired. They have some sense of ethics, responsibility, do the right thing, and of course, drugs and alcohol are not included. So that's the rub in terms of shifting from trying to prove that a problem exists to showing the obvious that the person's life is in shambles, that it's not gonna be fixed by a job. You know, the person has a job interview, you think it's, his problem is not lack of work. Okay, his problem is not lack of being enrolled in school. You can give him a Harvard scholarship in a corner office on Wall Street and all of the opportunity you want, and it'll be down the drain in a week or a month or however long it's going to take, but that it will be down the drain because the person's operating system, his modus operandi, is in the toilet flush amundi. <laughs> That's not great, but uh, you get the idea that until his ethics, his stability, his uh, communication, his involvement in the various areas of his life is repaired and to a condition where he is responsible again for the things, not only the things that he does, but for his family, for life, for his groups, for work, for school, for mankind, for spirituality. I mean, you can expand the idea. Um, until that is done to some degree, uh, uh, the drugs are just uh, you know, detox and proving that things exist and all that is not going to matter. So anyway, you get the idea. All right. Uh, if you want to ask me questions directly, you can visit stevebruno.com. You can buy my book, More Than Hope. Uh, there's a chapter in there called The Issue of Proof. If you'd like to read more, uh, you can also uh, ask your question in the comments section below. And uh, please subscribe if you like what you're hearing and, uh, you know, you can uh, uh, watch more videos. I'm always creating new videos. And uh, click the next button if you like the subject matter and if it doesn't interest you. I have many, many videos on here, many, many subjects. Hopefully you'll find something that will be even more illuminating and help you win the game. Okay, I'm Steve Bruno, and thank you for watching The Intervention Channel.